Rush in to Old Navy for big back-to-school savings. Right now, get up to 50% off the best kids and baby styles with jeans from just $12 and super soft tees from just $5. Today at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Validate 24 to 830. Select styles only. Five, four, three, two, one. It's the new Panic Room. It's the show other shows want to be, and the show that authors want to be on. Da! Someday, someday, somehow, somehow, I know we'll make it that far. Oh, that's love. That's love. Baby, I know that's love I want, he want your lips, your lips Caressing a fingertip That's love. that's love Baby, my crazy love Well, that's love, that's love. My love that's for love. you That's love You care for me someday That's love Baby, I know that's love Well, that's love supposed to something was supposed to happen after that but it didn't so uh, i don't know what went wrong there but hey uh, it is the, the all new uh, panic room radio new- show <laughs> is brought to you by hellboundbooks.com <laughs> well thank you peter griffin you're a knob um as i was saying it is 9 30 on thursday night it's it's obviously got a great start hasn't it um <laughs> Uh, episode 57 of the All New Panic Room with me, James H. Longmore, and Xtina, who will be along shortly. But I think, I tell you what, I'm going to bring her on now, because you know, I've missed her. I've missed her this week, so I'm going to bring her on now. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I, I, well, I don't know what happened there. Peter Griffin, I think maybe he, he was having a poo or something, but he, he finally made it. <laughs> I I miss you. I mean, we had, what a show we had last week. We what a did. Show, what a great great we couple did. of guests that um, that Longmore guy was fucking awesome. I have to. I love his stuff. He was. I do like he his was. stuff. He's great. I love that He's book. Great. I did. I did. I've been He's, reading a um, lot lately. A lot more than I have been in in past. No, well, I'm impressed. Like I mean, years. bearing in mind yeah. you. you, you yeah. Got, you, I'm beginning to think you don't want to read Pete. I think maybe creature things are not your thing, but I was really impressed. You, know, you read we, you read some <laughs> on in like three days. That was um, yeah, that was awesome. No, really. Well done, you. <laughs> and I do want to read Pete, but here's and this is awful. I'm going to say this, and I have to I have to buy it on Kindle. That's my problem. I can't. You know, you signed it. It's it's you know um, I, I can't break the binding. I, I can't. So seriously, uh, well, yeah, I, seriously. Can, I can send you another one. I have plenty. No, no. <laughs> I can, I can I'll send you another one. On, not a problem. <laughs> no, I get it on Kindle. And that way, um, you know, I can read it at night, and I, I don't have the book fall into my face. And um, that's happened before, by the way. So um, I, I guess I. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I don't know what I'll do if you know technology goes bad because I, I need my Kindle to uh, to read now. 
<clears throat> real books. To, and I, this is awful. I, I, I was reading a real book one time. Somebody sent me a book, and I was reading it. And I went to try to swipe to turn the page. Isn't that awful? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Awesome. <laughs> so. awesome. I, I must admit, I, I, I prefer paper. I really do. Um, I, I, I read a hell of a lot. I, I, I'm using my Kindle more and more. Um, especially, yeah. I, I, you know, if I'm reading, you know, new stuff um, or, you know, submissions from authors, I, I find a nifty little website that will convert anything to anything. So it'll convert oh, to yeah. Kindle. Yeah, if I have one of those too. It's so easier to find mistakes that way for me, anyway. So I, I that's It is how good, I use actually, it. yeah. Yeah, because you can make notes and what have you. But they, they'll send me a, yeah. a doc or PDF and say, "Boom, quick, quick conversion." You know, upload it to the Kindle. Jobs are gone. You know, so um, uh, you know it's it's great because then I can read. You know, like you say I can read anywhere, and it's it's a soccer season as well, which means mm. that two nights a week um, whilst under soccer <laughs> practice. So, you know, that's that's a forced hour and a half sat and I was mm. sat in the car or. Uh, sit in the park and, and read, and you know it's a good good reading time for me. But, yeah, um, yeah. There you the go. Was there you beautiful. go. Hmm? The weather was beautiful here today, and I'm I'm all excited about you know fall coming up really soon. And did I t- did I tell you about you know the crazy little area that I, I'm living in right now? There was a donkey. Did oh yeah, I did tell you because we talked about donkey shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did talk about donkey porn. Yeah. <laughs> There's a donkey like two blocks away from me, and if you. If you walk by at a certain time, he makes that noise that donkeys make. <laughs> well, it would do. That's because, because it's a donkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well done. But, no, as, opposed, as opposed to like doing impressions of James Stewart or something. <laughs> so, I mean, that, like, no, no, that would be great, wouldn't it? I don't. I, I'm. I'm kind of frightened about where I'm at right now because you know we have donkeys. We have like I swear there's dodo birds. Um, there's roosters walking around, and there's you do you, you know, do know horses. you do know that do, you do know dodos are extinct, don't you? <laughs> you do know that. Okay, maybe, no, don't, I don't do know that. So okay, maybe it wasn't a that. dodo bird, but it was some kind of weird, no, strange work. bird that I don't know what it was, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> really, dodo birds are I extinct. Despair. I did not know yeah, the dodos, not the dodo, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Right. You know I don't feel as bad oh, making saying that as I did with the whole butterfly egg God. thing. That that was pretty we, bad. We don't. We, we don't. You, you keep bringing it up. I refuse to discuss that with you, sir. <laughs> I do. I do. I can't let it go. <laughs> no, you can't. No. So anyway, speaking of letting things go, um, do we have a show tonight? Have we got a show for the listener tonight or not? We have an awesome show. Yes, we do. Good. <laughs> Are you going to elaborate or not? Or just, yeah, well, well I was wondering show. if you were going to do that. We it's have we show. have Jade West on. I'm excited to have her on. I am. That is Woo. awesome. All the way from Wales, fans. I understand. Yes. Yay. Yes. It's like 3.30 in the morning or something for her, isn't it? I know. Bless. We need yeah. to bring her on before she falls asleep. <laughs> we, we do, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we also have Jeff Strand, four times nominee of the Bram Stoker Award. So that's exciting as well. So, um... Is it? Yeah, it is. It is. So, um, <laughs> I think. I mean, no, no new panic room would 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 be would be complete before unless we started with um, you know who. by the pussy. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, grab him by the pussy indeed. Why not? Um, 
Well, I, I, it's, it's been another week, hasn't it? Another week of Trump, and he's gone from Mexico, we're going to pay for this fucking wall to, um, uh, to pay for it at some point. To, if you don't pay for it, I'm going to suspend Parliament or whatever. I mean, what a not. I mean, seriously, what a cock. I, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't have I've anything got a jingle. to say. I've got a jingle. Listen, listen. You're a cock. You're a cock. You're a cock. You're a cock. There you go. That's pretty much all. I mean, every time he opens it, he, the man, I mean, speaking as an outsider, as a Brit, and we say, yeah, I live here, but speaking, I, you know, the man is an absolute embarrassment. I mean, I mean. Mm. Yep. You know, but yeah. Clint, Clinton, I mean, he had the whole Monica Lewinsky thing. Um, hey, you I know, was rooting for him, though. I was. I, I but, thought that was, you know, no, okay, he was so, cool. Yeah. Was you cool know, so he, he had a dalliance with an intern. Probably not the first president that's ever done that, looking at yeah, you, Mr. J. Um, you know, <laughs> but it was almost like, good old Bill, you know, good old, yeah, old Bill, he splashed out on a new dress for Monica. You know, but <laughs> Trump is just an absolute not. I mean, he's just a narcissistic prick. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm at loss for words to describe the man. You know, every time he opens yeah. his mouth, it's an embarrassment. And yeah. the worst of it is, you know, he he's dangerous. He's got the finger on the button. He's he's he uh. enters into this schoolyard taunting with him. He's the bad haircut. You know, I mean, so Obama did nothing. What Obama did was ignore. Fuck yeah! He didn't do anything, yeah. and Kim just no, no, no. he's got Trump. Suddenly he's got an audience. You know, you give a bully an audience, and he plays up to it. You know, he's like a normal kid. Um, mm. And so, so I'm going to find it myself. Yeah. I said, it's so hard. It really is. You know, I've got more. I can you know, fire Brimstone against you, and oh, I can bomb Guam, and no, you're where Guam is. Yeah, Any he, you know, they think it's in the food section. <laughs> that, uh, that, that trade in market, you know, trade in or whatever. It, it, it's, but it's just this thing, it's spoiling upwards. And it, <laughs> I mean, it's not often, and I lived through a lot of the Cold War years when, you know, the relation with the 80s, the 70s, the 80s, the relations with Russia were pretty dire. Um, mm. I've never been more scared. I mean, a what world is going to be left for my kids if there's going to yeah. be anything left for my kids, you know? Yeah, um, no, I, I, this, I don't think I've ever been this. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been this ashamed to be an American. I mean, I used to be like, you know, go USA, but not anymore. I, I'm really not, and uh, it's, yeah, it's sad. Yeah, that was something yeah. I used to when I. Before I lived, you know, uh, when I, I visited America, I was I always used to love the pride the American people have in the f- themselves, in the armed force in America. Yeah. Now, people with everything going on, I'm just like British. I mean, we went through that for three years and to be just. just to be You're breaking up so bad right now. I think you, it's, you know sadly, what, I think it's. I, you're breaking up really bad, and I I I don't blame AT and T. I you know somebody said fucking AT and T. I blame the government. They they hear that we're talking about them, and so they're making you impossible to understand right now. That's my theory. I have a theory. But he, he's heard it, and what, yeah, I believe it. And what he's doing, he's sabotaging the show by, by rubbing the wires between his his butter. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring Jade on. You can chat with Jade. But I'll hopefully the. the, the oh, without the okay. Jade, I. Calling uh, <laughs> Wales. Hello. I, I, hi, hi. Hello. Tonight, Jade. How are you, my dear? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> very good indeed. <laughs> Uh, and it's like, what is it, like three something in the morning for you? Did it's you take a nap? I hope you took a nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't actually, but it's okay because I'm normally up at this time of night, so it, it's fine. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> you know, I used to be a night owl, but I, I'm not anymore. Now I'm usually in bed by, by midnight. I'm going, oh, my goodness. Well, actually, even earlier than that, but, you know, um, 
kids in, in school and, and all that crazy nonsense. So, you know, you have to be up early, so you go to bed a little earlier. But I'm starting to feel old, and, and um, that's just no good. But um, I wouldn't recommend this um, this nighttime uh, awakeness. <laughs> in general, it's, it's, it's not great. It's not very healthy. It used to be it? my favorite time to write, though, really late at night, because the house was quiet, you know, and you had your thoughts to yourself. But... Um, but that was when I was getting up at noon. <laughs> so. Yo, this is it, this is it, isn't it? It is a great time yeah. to write. So I think we yeah. all become relatively nocturnal over time, I guess. I know, I do, yeah. So you were here to talk to us about your book, Bait, is that right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, it was actually, it came out last week. Um, it is, it's a bit of a dark romance. Um, it's actually come out with the highest reviews of any of mine have ever come out of the of the stable door with, which is fantastic. Um, it's a story about two pretty broken people, to be honest, who form an unlikely uh, relationship online and uh, trying to navigate the the difficulties that come with trans well, moving that across to real life, I guess. So, um, yeah, it's it's been it's been pretty well received. I'm really I'm really pleased. It's always a bit nerve wracking when you release a book right. out there, but but yeah, so far so good. Awesome. Is it going to be a series or is it a standalone? Well, the book itself is a standalone, um, but I think there's going to be a, a follow up with the the hero's main brother. Um, just because I, I don't think I'm really ready to let this to let this world go just yet, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. I love when that happens when you you're writing in a world and or even you know just reading. I know that there was this series that I was just so taken with, and um, you know it it ended up being like ten books long. And when it was over with, even though I knew you know you can go back to the beginning, read all over again, but just knowing that that world is it's 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 done and over with. There will never be anything new. It was it was hard. It really was. It was. Um, I, I I probably cried, and um, you know I don't want anybody to know that I cry over books, but I do. <laughs> 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 but um, so you know, you, the, and the book is dark romance, right? Is it, the, uh, it dark, is dark erotica? Yeah. Or, yeah. Um. Well, technically, I mean, all of mine are relatively um, extreme in terms of their content. Mm-hmm. I'd say generally though it, it, it's it's a romance first and foremost it, the, the story of it is is a story about two people who find uh, a relationship together um there just happens to be <laughs> quite 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 dirty sex in it really as is as is nice. usual for mine so. <laughs> speaking of uh, n- dirty sex do do we <laughs> I'm hoping anyway uh, do do you have a reading for us I do, but it's not actually. It's it's not one of the dirtier parts. Um, oh. <laughs> I'd, uh, I thought I'd keep I this one so. a little bit tamer, but it does give a, a little bit of an idea as to. I mean, a lot of my books tend to revolve around fetishes and things people are interested in, um, mm-hmm. and this one is no exception. And I chose this particular little snippet because it gives a bit of a bit of an idea as to what is covered in this particular book. So. So we'll see. So shall I just go go right ahead and, and, and crack on with this? Yes, ma'am. It's all yours. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> okay, this is actually, it's from the point of view of um, Abigail, who is the main heroine in this book. And this is uh, relatively near the beginning. So um, here we go. Part of me regrets turning the girls from work down when they asked me out with them this evening. Part of me wishes I could find solace in the drink and chatter of a regular Friday night out with colleagues. Once upon a time, I loved weekend drinks with people from work. With him. I stare at the words on my laptop screen, my heart pounding with a strange mix of horror and excitement. I shouldn't click the OK button. There's no way I should post this online. And definitely not with any one of those arty obscure pictures of myself with the contrast raised up high and my hair covering half of my face. I'm standing on the edge of a precipice, staring into the unknown, and it's so stupid to flirt with disaster by inching that bit closer to the darkness. But behind me is just more of the same. More days at my desk, more evenings trying to convince myself life is good here. More fake smiles and self-help books as I try to get through everything that went so horribly wrong back home. I used to browse profiles on this website when I was younger, 
plucking up the courage to explore some of my darker fantasies. I never did. I was never brave slash reckless enough to risk it. Not back then when life felt right. But now it feels like a different story. I send a text to my parents with the usual things a good message I've been sending them every week since I arrived here. I reply to the photo message I got from my old friends with their miss you note scrawled underneath. I miss them too so much. But neither of those things pull me back from the ledge. No. I need to do this. I need to feel something, something other than this. My finger hits enter and I hold my breath as the screen changes to a tick with profile uploaded written underneath. Fuck. I've really done it. I click on the link to my new sex hookup profile and take a breath as I see my picture staring back at me. It's really there. Live. The green circle at the side of the image tells the world I'm online right now. The words look even worse somehow now they're out there to be seen. I'm seeking my monster in the darkness. I'll run, but you'll run faster. We'll play cat and mouse until you catch me. I won't know you and I'll pretend I don't want to. You'll pretend you don't care. I'll tell you I don't want it. You'll tell me you'll take it anyway, and then you will. And it'll be rough. One wild night where anything goes, and then we'll never see each other again. I feel like such a crazy as I read it back. My message sounds off. Too confident, maybe. Too callous, reckless. I click to edit. And when I feel the lump in my throat, I know I really am on the ledge. I'm tired. Tired of trying, tired of playing normal. The urge to bear my soul is too strong to ignore this evening, to be authentically vulnerable just once, even if only a handful of strangers use it as masturbation fodder. My fingers are jittery when I type. Please, I might sound crazy, but I need this. I've always needed this. Please help me feel alive again. I'm not seeking a psycho, just someone who can help me feel alive again. I can't face looking at my updated profile with its little green icon online, so I close the laptop as soon as I'm done. I sit on my bed in the tiny apartment I hope would feel like home by now, my knees pulled up to my chest as I stare at the patterns the streetlights make on the wall, and then my phone pings. No, that's it. Go. (laughs) Oh, shit, no, you can't stop there. No. No, I like that. (laughs) I want to know what happened now. I do tend to to gabble. I hope that wasn't a bit bit fast. Is that a Welsh word, I think, gabble? No, yeah, it's a British thing. It must be it's a British, it's a British thing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I could get it with like context clues and everything, but it's not something I would say. <laughs> that was that was awesome, and I love your accent, by the way. I I, I have you. a thing. I, yeah, we we need seriously every time we have a reading, and, and I, I just want to keep listening. And it's, it's so you know, which is weird. I have been dealing with this this issue for the past couple of nights. I decided I was going to try an audio book, and I can't do it. I found myself last night, this was crazy, I'm listening to the audio book, but I have it pulled up on my Kindle, and I'm reading along. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of having an audio book? You know? <laughs> yes, it so, does, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So I don't know. I, I don't like, maybe I don't like, It's. I, say, I, I was just going to say I don't like being read to, which is funny because on the show, that's my it's my favorite part and it's not just because I get to drink while they're reading either. Um <laughs> although that is a bonus. That is a bonus. That does help, <laughs> doesn't it? Very much so, yes. <laughs> yes. No, yeah. I'm, I'm the same. I, yeah. I, I don't think I I yeah, I mean I obviously listen to music. I, I like listening to uh, comedy um on mm. uh, tape or whatever, you know, uh, recording. Uh, but no reading. I, I like to read. I like to read at my own pace. Yeah. I, yeah. In fact, we, we, I can't remember who else. We had an author on months and months and months ago who, who said he, he, won't even, he won't do readings of his own stuff. I think he had, had me read it. Um, because I remember he he, that, yeah. He doesn't like to give his reader the, you know, a different voice. You know, like the reader to... That was that's what I like to do as a reader. I like to create my, my own voice. Uh, it may have been yeah. Richard, yeah, because I, I, I read from Gwendy's button box. Gwendy's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, and I, I, I kind of get that because you, it's like when you read a book and then you see a movie and you think, no, they've got, that's not him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't yep. look like that. You know? <laughs> yeah. just, no, no, they've got that wrong. Yep. They've got that wrong, you know, and because you, you've built up your own mental image yeah. of, of the character. I think that's what reading's about. I think, you know, audio books for me, 
takes that a little bit away. But then again, my father-in-law, he 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 drives a lot, he travels a lot, um, and he, you know, he, he munches through audio books like you wouldn't believe because he he can catch, you know, can read while he's driving. I suppose in effect. Yeah. Yeah, I get, it's just not for me. I, I think I'm going to definitely go back to just the reading because it's just not, uh, it doesn't hold my attention. It, it, the, the only way it did was when I was reading along with it. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to cut out the middleman there and go back to reading because, um, I don't know. And and I have to say, Jade, I, I started reading, oh, I can trying to remember the name of it, Dirty, Dirty Bad Wrong, something like that. Do I have it right? Yeah, I I, I started reading that um, a couple nights ago, and I love that way you start right out with, you know, she's in chains. (laughs) Oh, that's right, yeah. I'm like, well, you know, wow, I love the way start a book like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like that, that's a great way to start a book, by the way. <laughs> because it well, had me going, a wow. <laughs> Those um, all tend, the dirty bads all tend to start kind of like that, actually. It's like you get a, a snippet of what's to come, and then it, it sort of like winds back, and you, you get into the, the story, like a, however long it was before before that initial scene happened. So, oh, yeah, they're a bit, they can yeah. be quite striking. <laughs> Quite striking when you pick them up first, I think. Yeah, I love so, that. I mean, so I did. <laughs> I've, I've got to ask Jade. I mean, you know, where, where where do you where do you get your inspiration from for um, for smut <laughs> for your, for your well, um, I used to I uh, used to be a chat line operator uh, a few years back, um, and believe me that there's there's not a lot that I that I didn't <laughs> uh, hear about in that stint. All right, I was uh-huh. literally the most popular party guest ever you know I'd go out anywhere and people would be like tell me about your callers and it was crazy you know I had people into radiators guillotines um, burning money um, yeah. all sorts of crazy stuff amazing stuff um, and generally I mean I don't think anybody in my real life that I've ever met would be surprised by the books that I ended up writing um, because I, I'm, I've always been that dirty one <laughs> I've always been, nice. I've always awesome. been that one Awesome. Yeah. Wow. It, it is. Yeah. I must admit, it is. It is astounding. Um, you know, just the sort of stuff that um, uh, that floats people's boats. I mean, back back in England, many many years ago, I, I, one of the companies that I, I we created and ran was um, a fantasy fulfillment. I mean, you obviously over in England, you've heard of Red Letter Days, yeah? Um, yeah. It was a sort of an adult version of that. Uh, oh, we nice. had products in Harrods. We had products in Harrods at one point, um, and yeah, you know, the more we got into it, I mean, there was like the uh, the more vanilla stuff, you know, the boudoir photography, and we actually uh, somebody paid us handsomely to organise for him, his wife, and a friend, a lady friend, to join the Mile High Club in a private plane. Uh, so oh, I mean, wow. there's that there's oh. stuff. But then as we got into, there's more like the um, under the counter sort of stuff, metaphorically speaking, and the stuff that people i mean you're right was like, "Are you serious? I mean there's one guy, and he was genuinely serious, he wanted us to organize for him to have sex with a horse whoa. Um, whoa. and wow. whoa, very very good well done Steve. yeah <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> uh, we, i mean I, I will say we we did not for many many reasons well we couldn't find the horse for that for oh many reasons we but, but you know, but the, some of some of the bizarre, you know, the bizarrely, what you know, I guess weird things that people are into is, it's a never-ending list. You know, when you think you've heard it all, I mean, you know, Jade's probably I say the chat line thing. You probably every day thought oh, I've heard everything now. And then you know, the next day, no, I haven't actually. <laughs> well, the <laughs> thing some of them are really specific as well. You know, I had this one, this one guy and. He particularly he wanted to be gunged, you know, like on those uh, game shows where there's a forfeit, they get yeah. gunged, you know, like this guns dropped on the head. But he particularly <laughs> wanted to be gunged in front of a live studio audience, but it had to be rainbow coloured gunge and I had to be with him and I had to be wearing a yellow P V C cat suit. This was his <laughs> particular fantasy and it had to be exact, like he had to run in through it and yeah. it had to be exact, you know, it couldn't be anything else. It had to be Exactly wow. as he wanted. It, it, it makes you wonder what happened at what point in his life that was imprinted on his <laughs> brain. 
you know? Well, that's the thing. You don't want to end up doing it for too long, this, that kind of job. Otherwise, you'd end up... What, 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 does you, what does make you want to be gunged in front of a live studio audience? I'd have been interested in. It's funny because one of the most popular things we dealt with was um, uh, sploshing, which is food. You know, people being... Yeah, the food one, yeah. Having, basically, yeah. having food thrown at them. And... Yeah, the gunge thing, and a lot of, uh, you know, people in in that end of the business said, you know, a lot of it dated back. And again, the American people think, well, get this so much. But um, remember, Tis was, um, yeah, yeah, where they they and again, gunge. I mean, now over here they have like um, when they do the 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 Nick Awards, Nickelodeon Award. You know, they they this green gunge left, right, and center. Yeah, you know, slime it? or something. And it's imprinted. Yeah. On a lot of kids, there'll be a lot of kids who've grown up watching Nick who will go on to have green goose fantasies, you know, and it, it's, oh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing. I, I read a very interesting article not that long since about uh, foot fetishism. And the, the, one of the beliefs is that, you know, people um, become imprinted on feet because there's very, very small children, and that's the part of their mother specifically that they see. You know, you're crawling around and all those, you're going to see your mum's feet more than anything. And allegedly, you know, that, that helps to imprint, you know, in the, other, you know, sexual parts of the brain upon maturity. But, um, yeah. So weird. Interesting. Yeah. There's, I mean, the whole psychology of it. I mean, do, again, if, if, <laughs> I'm not Jade. Anyway, I mean, were you actually one of the girls that people phone and you, you, you talk them through yeah, what it is they're me, doing? Yeah, that was me, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> How long did you do that for? About a year. I used to try and work out. It's pretty gross, actually. I'd probably best not go there. I used to try and work out how much, uh, how many callers I'd uh, helped along the <laughs> along the <laughs> over the course that year. Oh. It would have been a lot, you know. And some of them are literally you pick up the phone, they're halfway there, and you get, you know, 15 seconds. And some of them will call you all night long. And it's crazy because, yeah. you know, it used to cost a ridiculous sum of money, and they just call back and back again. Yeah. And, and you know it was insane, wow. but yeah, they, they, people get really into it. And as much as anything, I think these are people who have literally got no outlet for some of these fantasies in their everyday life. And it's really yeah. quite sad you know, that they have to call somebody at an extortionate rate in some ways to to, <laughs> to talk about it. But you well, know, um, I mean, if they find something that specific, I mean, there's a good chance they'll never find out like, other than. Yeah. Um, you know, something like that. Um, you know, that there's unlikely to be. Although these days, I mean, you know, you could pretty much type anything into Pornhub and find find anything. You could probably find <laughs> rainbow <laughs> rainbow coloured gunge fantasy with yellow <laughs> cats in it, and you, it's probably there. And you you but know it's, it's you know, popular. listen, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that the minute we will be there. I'm gonna look for that. <laughs> Well, I hope he's not listening because he's going to be like, "That's so weird. That's my fantasy, or whatever." Um, right. Yeah, well, there's, there's somebody yeah. else. Woohoo! <laughs> he could, he could but, start a know, Facebook sure. group, couldn't he? <laughs> oh, right. As, a, as an operator, it's your job, really, is it is to, to make it seem as though you're right there with them. So you know, uh, and you get to know people. So one minute you're there going. You're trying to play along with this, you know. Oh, I love radiators, you know. <laughs> and the next minute, you're like, oh, I love that. I love burning money, and I love, uh, I love shaving people's hair off, and I love, you know, whatever it is. And it's quite, it's quite bizarre, you know. It's very strange, but great job. I loved it. I loved it. It was, it was, it was uh, very, uh, very entertaining for, for a year. It was great. But a, a great, ga- a great ga- grounding for obviously for the, you know, the books yeah. that you write now, yeah. I mean, you, you must did, have an you... endless, endless supply of, of stories that you can put put, put down on paper. <laughs> well, I'm not sure how well some of them would would, would go down, you know, if I suddenly did a, so, a I mean, book where everyone I'm, was I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm so distracted. I'm really, really interested about the radiator thing. Could you elaborate? The radiator, he's, you know, he'd literally call up and be like, oh... I mean, they always sound very excited, obviously, when they say, oh, have you, have you got any radiators in your place? And I'd be like, yeah, I've got loads. In this room, I've got two, two big ones. He'd be like, are they on? I'd be like, yeah, they are on. You know, I wanted to go and sit by them and tell him how hot they were. And, uh, like, it's getting too hot to even sit by this radiator now. And he's like, just sit by it, you know. And that was it. And he'd, he'd be crazy for that. It's very... Uh, 
It's very wow. bizarre, and it's <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> and <another guy> Radiator <laughs> porn. I, I, I'm just. I, I'm just having a new thing. That is the most wonderful thing I've heard for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it is an unusual one, that one, I think. Uh, I think he was the only yeah. person I spoke to who was into that particular one. But Wow. He's probably the only person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, it was a pretty, in fairness to him, it was a pretty uh, pretty easy one to, to talk through, you know. <laughs> most people got out of the radiator, so it was pretty easy. You just, just go and sit down by there and... I have a whale of a time. So. Well, do you I, know, I that, keep... that wouldn't work so much here because they, they do central air. There's no radiators. They don't? Uh, oh, so well, that would be that, that would, would be, be awful. awful for <laughs> Come on. It would be done. You have to man. stay here in the country, you know. There you go. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I, I love keep that. wanting... I keep waiting to figure out how to, uh, you know, go into our, our, you know, my 11 questions thing, but I couldn't find a smooth way, so that was as smooth as you get. Where's the, the little jingle thing? I, I Where's the put her, jingle her on one more? Yeah. Yeah. And now, 11 <laughs> questions. <laughs> okay, you ready, Jade? Yeah, I'm ready for this. Okay, uh, number okay, and this is eleven questions here, but the funny part is is there's there's only ten and there's 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 not even a story. James just, you know, gave me uh told me it's eleven questions, but there's only ten. So here we go. Uh, <laughs> what's okay. your guilty what's your guilty pleasure? Oh my guilty pleasure. Um drinking far too much Kayla, I think. <laughs> It's not radiators. You've caught me out now. It is radiators. Yeah, of course. I know. After that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to phone you later and talk about radiators. You know that. That's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, God. Okay. Um, uh, here we go. I'm, I'm flustered now. Um, baked beans. Rain you saw, saw those radiators. This is the only, only radiators. <laughs> gorgeous. Um, gorgeous. Okay, okay, here we so, go. Baked beans, ranch style or pork and beans? What is ranch style for a start? Right? Thank you. No, right? they exist. They do exist. They right? do. I've seen pictures. The only, the only way to eat beans, isn't it? I've seen pictures. They do exist, but I don't know what they are they either. So. But, well, she, she, she's in Wales. They've only just got in Dockman in Wales. So, you know, ranch. They, we they, literally... Cross, yeah. If it's not on toast, we, we don't know about it. Beans right, on right. toast. Yeah, that's it. Beans on toast. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go. Here we... Um, puppies or kittens? Oh, puppies, definitely. Right, I agree. Um, Yay. What's your, what's your favorite lunch meat? Oh, um... Wow, well, I'm not not going to go where my mind went there. Um <laughs> Please, you should go there. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to say... That's another, another like caller, nice isn't it? Ham. Your callers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, that's good, that's good. I, I won't judge you too harshly for that, that answer. Um, turkey, you know, the people who answer turkey, I, I frown upon, so... No, we don't know. Um, we don't want to. Yeah. What was your first car? Uh, it was a black uh, Ford Fiesta, with, and it used to belong to a boy racer before me. It had this big bean can exhaust on it, and its dashboard was like glittery blue. It was great. Nice. I called it Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, oh, what do you fear most, snakes or spiders? Oh, spiders, I think. I'm not particularly fond of either, though. Yeah. Spiders, spiders. Yeah. yeah, if I see a live snake somewhere, that, that'll freak me out a little bit, but it's definitely spiders all the way. Um, Freddy, Jason, or Pinhead? Oh, you know what? I was petrified of Freddy when I was a kid. Like, <laughs> petrified. Um, Pinhead's kind of weird. Um, Jason, nondescript. So, yeah, I'd say Freddy. Freddy just because he petrified me when I was when I was younger. <laughs> um, let's see. First draft, handwritten or word processor? Uh, word processor, definitely. Um, yeah, I can't even yeah. read handwriting, so... I can't either. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't <laughs> either. It's bad. I, I wrote a letter to somebody not too long ago, and they're like, you know, it'd be nice if I could read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I can't do that. Um, favorite alcoholic drink? Um, I don't drink, actually. Um, mm-hmm. so if I had to drink, I'd say probably a nice glass of Prosecco. Ah, but I'd be drunk okay. after, so... It would be only one. 
<laughs> okay, uh, one interesting non-writing related fact about you. Oh, um, I am really good at the game Bop It. Do you have Bop It? I don't, I don't know. Do we have that game, James? It's I, like, I, I it's don't know. Like what what thing. is that? What it's game like is a that? handheld thing, and you have to go like flick it or bop it or whatever. I'm really good at that kind of stuff. Anything, bop it. Any bop those it. Yes. Stupid games, I, I'm good at those. Yeah, I, I, have, like, yeah, I think I think we do have it. Yeah, I don't know. And and here's our bonus question, not to be confused with question eleven because we don't have eleven questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> baseball or stamp collection? Oh wow. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know too much about either. Um probably I'd say baseball because yeah. some collection no. I'm not I'm not sure I'm too, too good at that. <laughs> baseball all the way. I think I think that baseball is definitely baseball, winning, I'd, I'd James. <laughs> but what what stamps with radiators on them? Would that make a difference for you? Well you could literally cover a radiator with stamps, couldn't you? You could do that. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Now, now we're talking. I'm gonna to have to private message you on that one. That's probably two. That's the most standard in one. Oh god. Double whammy. <laughs> it's, it's 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 certainly one of mine. I'm gonna put this in a book. You know, I'm this is gonna be the next book. It's gonna be Dirty Bad Radiator. <laughs> dirty Bad Radiator. You naughty, oh, naughty yeah. radiator. You. It's gonna be. It's gonna be massive. I think. You know, I, I can really see we, this we taking should. off. Can I? Can I? Co- can I co-write? I want to co-write it with, please. <laughs> yeah, you can. You, you can add the stamps if you like. You can. You can come in and do a <laughs> guest. You know, stamp <laughs> chapter. I, oh my god. Could I, could I, I hate that we are just about time. Are just about over with our our first segment here. I can't even talk right. I'm laughing too hard. I have tears in my eyes. Um. But can you tell us where we can find you online, Jade? You can. You can um, always find me on Facebook because I'm never off there. Um, and that's facebook.com forward slash Jade West author. Um, you can find me at jadewestauthor.com. You can also find me on Twitter. Um, you can find me. I've got a reader group on Facebook as well. Generally, you can find me on social media all over the place. <laughs> and on Amazon, awesome. of course, you can find my books on there. But. <laughs> I do think we have all of your um, links put up on our Facebook page, so if anybody wants to stock date, they can do it there. And Yay. you have to promise to come back and see us. We're going to have you on for the whole show next time, and we're just going to talk about dirty radiators, I guess. Yeah, let's do <laughs> it. We're going to talk, be, about, we're gonna talk about, um, about radiators, so um, <laughs> I mean, we'll look forward to that. I've got a whole host okay. of stories like this. We could do like a whole series on it. It's gonna be great. <laughs> and we will do that. We will. Do, I will. I will get. I will. I will get in touch with you on Facebook, and we we will um we'll collaborate on uh, naughty bad radiators. I, th- I can see that being a, that. We, an international bestseller. It'll make Fifty Shades look like crap, to be honest with you. It will, of course, because everyone mm. wants these these alternate fetishes now. The the, the, yes. the, the mainstream is is done. It's all it, about the it? it old BDSM <laughs> yawn. Oh, let's tie up and spank her. Yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about radiators and stamps. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like okay. that. <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> I need to pour more, more wine now. So, <laughs> Again, thank you so much for coming on the show, and Thanks I will definitely be getting me. with you to stalk you and ask you to come back yeah. because this has been great fun. <laughs> Right, yes. Thank you, thank you for staying up late as well, Jade. Really appreciate it. Yeah, that's it. great. Well, thanks for having me. I've had a thoroughly good time. <laughs> good. So have we. So have we. And thank happy radiators. <laughs> and up to you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I like that. I like that. Oh, my that. gosh. So, hey, um, <laughs> quick round of commercials, then we're going to have a break, then we'll be back with Becky the Reviewer and India Corner and... And Jeff and my dog. Oh, yes, and she's there. She's queuing up ready. So off you go, XP, okay. you know, if you can be bothered. Here we go. The portals have opened once more. We swear it wasn't our fault this time. Hellbent Books Publishing is pleased to announce the arrival of another taboo anthology, The Big Book of Bootleg Horror, Volume 2. Following close on its heels comes Depraved Desires 2, an anthology of dark erotica and erotic horror compiled and edited by internationally best-selling author Bonnie Capps. 
And finally, horror alter P. Mattern has summed up a new anthology, Devils, Demons, and Denizens of Hell. Go to hellboundbookspublishing.com to purchase these anthologies and and, more. And radiators. And radiators. (laughs) Demons, devils, denizens of hells, and radiators. Okay. And and finally, we at Hellbound Books are proud to announce our very own app on both Google Play and the App Store. In the mood for something steamy to read this summer, check out Neurotica author Jennifer Lynn's website at jenniferlynnerotica.com. You can find James at his website, www.jameslongmore.com. And don't forget to follow the Panic Room Radio on social media. Our Facebook page, unofficial, the Panic Room Radio Show. Twitter at Panic Room Radio. Our YouTube channel, the new Panic Room Radio Show. And come visit our website, www.panicroomradio.com. <sighs> there we go. <laughs> okay, and um, radiators. I just like saying radiators now. I'm just obsessed with things. So um, I'm going to go. And, sadly, we we do not have radiators in this house. It's all sort of the central air thing. So um, um, my car has a radiator. I'll go. I'm going to go and have a look at that now. So uh, in the meantime, we'll have a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was having a wee. I was having a big old wee there, so um, I, I didn't... Oh, hang on just a sec. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yay. So, hey, before we bring on Becky the Reviewer, we have... Um, are you going to do the jingle? For Indie, we'll get India Corner, everybody. Do the jingle. Wait. Indie Corner. Indie, Indie Corner. Corner. Indie, Indie Corner. Corner. That's it. <laughs> Quinn. It's a mini Harley Quinn. So, hey, um, and so what have you what have you got for us this weekend? So, say hi to Extina. Hi, Extina. And say hi to hi, Becky, India. the reviewer. Hi, Becky. Hang on, shall we bring Becky? Let's bring Becky on as well, because Becky always likes to say it. Becky wants to complain your fort one day. So, hi, oh, Becky. Oh, sorry, yeah. I took it down. I took it down. Becky oh, we'll have to fort. build another one. Yeah. yeah I'm she, good at building fort. She's brilliant. She's the best fort builder ever. So, <laughs> hey, um, India has, um, what have you got for us, India? Um, I just picked a random book. I have Mr. Brown Can Moo. Can you? No. Right, we're going to hear a little bit of Mr. Brown Can, can Moo. Can, can, can you? Can, I can. I can. Can you moo? <laughs> moo. 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 Hey, Tina, <laughs> Becky. <laughs> moo. Becky. 
Thank you. Moo. That was the worst <laughs> moo ever. Next, next, time, next time. Put that bit of effort. Bit of effort. Right, and you're going to read a little bit now. So off you go. He he can go. He can go eek eek like squeaky sh- like a squeaky shoe. He can he can go like a rooster. Cock a doo doo doo. He can go like an owl. Hoo 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 hoo. Eek. Eek, 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 cock a doo doo doo. Hoo, hoo, hoo. How about you? He can go like the rain. Jibble, 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 drop. Jibble, 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 drop, drop, drop. <laughs> he can go like a train. Choo, 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 choo. Oh, the wonderful things m- Mr. Brown can do. Moo, moo. Buzz, buzz. Pop, pop, pop. Eek, eek. Hoo, hoo. Clop, clop, clop. Jibble, jibble. Drop, drop. Cock a doo doo doo. Mr. Brown can do it. How about you? Okay. I think that's enough for the reading. Okay. That's enough for the, that was an awesome reading. What do it we say? Was yeah. Great. So um before 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 we bring Becky on, India's gonna do embarrassing story. Okay, so <laughs> Wait, about God. me? Yes, about you, not about me, thank you. <laughs> Wait, can I do no, one about you, please? You cannot do one about me. No, please? right, okay. We're gonna do the intro and we're gonna do an embarrassing story. Okay. Hi, I'm Patty and I'm Thelma. What is your most embarrassing story? <laughs> okay, what embarrassing story? How about the one where we're in the escape the room zombie thing? Oh, this is great, seriously. Okay. Look at this, folks. Um, so, um, uh, we went to escape the room, and there's a zombie in it, and like, uh, the. Zomb- yeah, sorry, you're familiar with the escape the room concept, yeah? Well, you have to, mm-hmm. they lock you in, you have to solve puzzles to get back out. In this yeah, one, yeah. we actually had a zombie chained up, and like every 10 minutes, they'd ring a bell, and the chain would get longer, so the zombie could get out into the room a bit more. So carry on, here we go. So I think it was either when he got out of the thing, no, he was chasing me, and <laughs> he got behind me. <laughs> And I'm so glad I was wearing a dress because I tiddled a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of weed came out, didn't it? A little bit of weed. <laughs> I think I went a weed not, too, though, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I was not, I was not so lucky because I had white leggings, but I was lucky because I had a dress on. Yes, you are. Yeah, that was that was, that was funny. It was a little bit oh, of weed came out. It scared the pee out of me, literally. So well, thank you. Thank you. Joining us, India. We're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna listen listen to Becky now. I'm staying. Are you gonna stay, or you need to be quiet if you stay. Can you do that? She Maybe. doesn't do quiet. <laughs> um, okay, so Becky, Becky, good good to have you with us. What are you what are you um what are you reviewing this week? Well, actually, we're gonna talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart, which is author interviews. No, it's not radiators, and... is it, by any chance? No, no, not radiators. It? Not this time. No. Oh. Mm-hmm. Sorry, my my interest is just tanked. I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, oh, a while back, um, and, and I've interviewed a whole lot of, of authors, and and I have been really lucky and and gotten to know some really amazing, amazing guys. And girls. And um, recently I was asked to write 100 questions um, for an wow. author for in, an interview. And I was like, holy cow, what in the world do I ask? So a friend of mine and I sat down and, and we, we came up with 100 questions. And actually, I was pretty impressed with most all of them. And um, so I sent them to him, and he has um, had... Readers also ask him questions, and he compiled them in a book. And so, and the author that I'm talking about is Matt Shaw, and the book is called Open and Exposed. Mm-hmm. And there are over a hundred questions. There are my hundred questions, and then 
all these readers that have written questions and, and sent them to me. And um, it's absolutely the, one of the most interesting things that I've read. <laughs> and I yeah. think all authors should do this. It was just, it's just amazing. I need to send you and James both the questions that I sent him. And and let you, I mean, just to look at them, not necessarily, you know, have to answer them, but, mm-hmm. um, oh, I'd love to send them to Jeff Strand, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, this book just, it really, it just kind of blew me away, because I, I didn't know that that's what he was doing with them when mm-hmm. I wrote the questions. I wouldn't change any of them for anything. But I thought, you know, okay, I have the blog and, and whatever, and I do the interviews. I figured I'm going to have to figure out how to post 100 questions on my blog, you know, that he's <laughs> answered. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. But then, you know, after I sent him the questions and he answered them and he, he messaged me back and said, hey, I've, I've done the questions. And I'm like, oh, okay, that was quick, you know. <laughs> and um, I said, are you sending them back to me or, or what are you doing with them? And he goes, no, I'm writing a book. And I went, <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> so, but anyway, anybody that has read Matt's books or, or, or knows Matt, whatever, I, this book is great. I mean, it shows, you know, the the person side of him, not just him as a writer. And I really like that because I think a lot of times when when people read the books, they just see the author and the words. They don't see the person behind it and their personality and, and how their, you know, characters are part of them and whatever. And, and I just, I think that's very um, special and it really makes the connection with the readers. Definitely, definitely. I love reading um, author interviews and, and, and all the extras. I have uh, I have these, these one authors that I follow um, and they're always posting um you know, scenes that were deleted from their books and, and a bunch of different authors just it, it just it really does. It makes you um I think care about uh the the work more and makes you, you know, follow it them. Does. It's really cool. It really is. It's, I, uh, I always like, like to it. I always like to to find out where the idea of the story came from. If there was, you know, if there was yeah. a background, you know, behind yeah. it. Like, you know, were you sitting in a coffee shop and somebody, you know, sneezed and you know, blew their brains half out their ear, and you went, oh, i got a yes, story, but you know, I'm like, where did that come from? Right, but, right. So I always awesome. like it when they tell me, tell me that, but th- this is a, this is a very interesting read, and, and I, I highly recommend it. Yeah, you know, it's funny, well, because sometimes um, that question, you know, where did you get the idea or something, people think that's such a oh, that's such a basic, you know, such a basic question or something. But it's something that I think a lot of people want to know. I know I do. I I love to hear the Uh stories about, you know, um, and and some of the people who have have been on our show and they talk about, you know, where they got their inspiration from. It's really fascinating. It really is. Yes, it is. Yeah. There's a a story behind every story, which is sometimes, you know, as, as interesting as the story itself, you know. Um, but then again, I mean, we said on the show before, you know, that there, there, there are other stories that, you know, you can ask a writer where it came from, and I have, I have no idea. They just popped <laughs> into my head. True. I have no idea the background, you know, where, you know, what, what experience I've had that generated that thought. So I think yeah. either way, you know, it's. Um, but I think, if, I think if you dig deep enough, you know, the, the roots are there. But um, anywho, 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 we have um, we have the one and only Jeff Strand. Waiting in the wings. So I know Becky wants to say hi, so we're going to bring um, Jeff on board. Are you there, Jeff? Yep, I'm here. Hello, everyone. Hey, hi. Becky wants to say hello. Hi, I think she's trying to. St- she's stealing the show. Big in the pot. <laughs> no, I'm not. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Good. How are you, Becky? I'm fine. I um I got Xena to read some of your yes. books this week. <laughs> You know, I I do try to read something of of our our guests. I I've noticed that it makes for a better show if I have some idea of what they write. You know, and and Becky was kind enough to uh, she she got me uh, your um, she got me blister okay. and and I started reading it and you know be, before like a couple of weeks ago I have um, I I couldn't read anything like it would take me forever to read a book 
and I read that in like I think it was like 24 hours or something, and I freaking mm-hmm. loved it. I really did. I and I telling everybody I come across, I'm like, you have got to read this book. It was so good, and I'm I'm like totally fangirling now. But um, <laughs> hey, Becky wouldn't scare you wrong. No, you know, I would not. <laughs> now I trust her completely. I do. <laughs> so, Anything that Jeff Rice is good. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm actually reading the second uh, – what am I reading now? Cyclops Road. And, uh, uh-huh. again, we, I was talking about this earlier, that I, I I started doing the audio book just because I have it in audio books. I thought I'm going to – but I, I have to go back to just reading. And that's just me. It has nothing to do with the, the audio version. It's wonderful. But um, – you know, for me personally, I have to do it myself. I have to read it myself. It's, it's, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. Does that, do you feel like that? I mean, do you uh, appreciate audiobooks as well, or you know? Um, I like them because you can listen to them while you're driving and stuff. I generally mm-hmm. prefer to actually read it because I like to read it at my own pace. Mm, and right. I usually cringe when I listen to my own audiobooks because I don't read them and. <laughs> As well done as they are, it never it never matches the way I hear it in my head when I was writing. Yeah, yeah. So it's no. like I, I've had really good luck with audio books. You know, the narrators I've worked with have been outstanding, but it's usually, yeah. like, no, it's wrong, it's wrong. That's not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> but I would do a much worse job if I read my own books. So I need the professionals to do it. No, and, and the, the narrator, the guy who's who's reading um, Cyclops Road is doing a really great job. He really is. Yeah. But this is Joe something Hample's I've noticed is that there, there's been a couple places where I know if I was reading it, I would have laughed out loud, but I didn't because, <laughs> of, you know, I mean, so I, it's like I wasn't actually there, you know. Um, yep. So, I don't know. But, and, and I have to say, we were, um, you know, you, you were going to talk about uh, Blister, and that was, I don't. I cannot tell you how many times I laughed while I was reading this, and you know there would be a you know something happened that was kind of, you know, uh, semi scary or something. You know something that intense was happening, and then um, the, the, he would crack a joke and just pretty, you know lighten the mood, and not only that, but just um, had me cracking up. And I'm like, this is not the time. But man, he. And, and you know, then I'm thinking, you you must be a really funny guy. If you you know, I mean, do you just walk around cracking jokes all the time? I mean, that would be awesome. <laughs> no, I will. You will discover over the next half hour that that is not true. Really? Damn it! <laughs> like, oh, I thought he was going to be just the wackiest, most obnoxious person ever, and they no, not walk obnoxious. away disappointed. That was so funny, God. Um, and it, yeah, I don't know. That was uh, awesome. So, um. Do you? Oh, yeah. Do you have a reading for us? Are you going to read to us? I can't wait for this. Part. I sure do. <laughs> Yay! It's from Blister. It doesn't really require any setup because it's almost the very beginning of the book. It's right. missing right. maybe three or four paragraphs, so it's no dramatic setup required. Okay. Okay. What's funny is when you had told me I would be doing a reading, I thought, oh man, this one has the S word in it. I better watch out. And then I. <laughs> Listen to some previous shows and thought, no, I think I'm... Yeah, totally we're rated R. You can say anything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My little story begins with two of the neighborhood kids, Greg and Dennis. School had started a couple of weeks ago, and one afternoon I looked out of my living room window and saw them standing outside of my backyard, rattling the metal links on the fence to rile up my schnauzer. No big deal. I taunted a dog or two when I was 10. I went back to work. The next day they did the same thing. Ignatz ran back and forth, barking furiously, while the kids laughed and shouting things, including but not limited to, you can't get me, you stupid dog. So I couldn't argue the truth of their assessment of his intelligence. Ignatz was the sweetest dog I'd ever owned, but his brain capacity was low. I decided to put a stop to this. I came out the back door and gave them a friendly smile. Hey, I'm going to have to ask you guys not to tease my dog. People next door get upset if he barks too much. Greg gave me the finger. Screw you, old man. The kids ran off laughing. Old man? Old man? I was 38. Barely 38. I just celebrated a birthday last month. Little bastards. I played fetch with Ignatz for a few minutes, then took him inside and resumed drawing the day's installment of Off Balance, the comic strip I'd been doing for the past decade. 
The punchline to this particular strip involves Zep the Beetle having a stone gargoyle shoved up his nose, which was proving to be a more difficult artistic challenge than I'd anticipated. On the third day, the rotten brats threw rocks. I made it outside just in time to hear a loud yip as a rock hit Ignat in the side. Greg and Dennis ran away. Ignatz didn't seem hurt. He licked my face happily as I scooped him into my arms, but it was time to involve the parents. If I remembered correctly, Greg's house was the red one on the corner, two blocks down. I put Ignatz inside, walked over there, and knocked on the door. A tired-looking, heavy-set blonde woman answered. Hi, I said. Are you Greg's mother? Yes. I'm Jason Trey. I live in the White House about two. The one with the graveyard in the front yard? I smiled. Only at Halloween. She didn't smile back. All of October, actually. Right. Anyway, your son and his friend were throwing rocks at my dog. Maybe they were defending themselves. He's inside a fence. Maybe they were worried that it was going to get out. I shook my head. If they were worried that he was going to get out, they wouldn't stand there and throw rocks at him. I'm not one of those, hey, you kids, get off my lawn, neighbors. Uh huh. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not. I just can't have your son hurting my dog. So if you could have a talk with him and let him know that it's not cool to throw things at animals, I'd appreciate it. Why don't you keep it inside? Uh, the whole reason I've got a fence is so Ignatz can be outside. I'm not asking you to keep your kids indoors. I'm asking you to tell him to quit behaving like a psychopath. I cringed at my own comment, since parents tended to react poorly when you referred to their child as a psychopath. But this lady was starting to piss me off. Greg's mother barely even acknowledged my comment. She sort of nodded and sort of shrugged. I stood there for a moment, waiting for a verbal response. Thanks, I finally said, figuring that the conversation was over. Okay. I walked back to my house. I'd been tempted to mention that her 10-year-old was giving the finger to adults, but I didn't want to be a whiny tattletale. As long as they weren't destroying stuff or harming pets, I was fine with kids being kids. I'd lived in this neighborhood for nearly three years without any problems. The next day, I was so absorbed in my work that I didn't realize what time it was until I heard Ignat yelp in pain. I rushed out the door just as those little shits each threw another rock at him through the fence, both of which missed. They ran off laughing. I crouched down next to Ignat and ran my fingers through his fur. There was a small welt on his back. Now, I realized that I was the mature adult and they were the children, and that I should have taken the higher road but I wasn't in a higher road kind of mood. I drew fast and was way ahead of deadline on off balance, and that made it very easy for me to take the rest of the day off to plot my revenge. First, I needed a fake chainsaw. Not some cheap rubber thing. I wanted one that looked and sounded totally real, but wouldn't actually, you know, slice children in half. After a few phone calls, I found one at a costume shop that was an hour and a half away. I enjoyed the drive. I wanted to find a phony severed head that looked as if it could belong to a 10-year-old, but I wasn't able to locate one that I could get by the following afternoon. So I went with an adult head, a really cool one with a rubber tongue lolling out of its mouth and part of the spinal column dangling from its neck. The next day, I let Ignat out into the yard and splashed some fake blood on my face and clothes. I looked at myself in the mirror. Nope, not enough. By the time I was satisfied, I was absolutely drenched in gore. Heh <laughs> The reprehensible little creep showed up on schedule. As Dennis pounded his fist against the fence, I burst out of the door and ran toward them, a severed head in my right hand, a roaring chainsaw in my left. Greg and Dennis shrieked. The crotch of Greg's pants immediately darkened. They fled, screaming in terror. Yeah, I know. I really should have left it at that. Instead, I opened the gate and chased them down the sidewalk, letting out my most maniacal laugh which I was disappointed they wouldn't be able to hear over the chainsaw since it was a pretty darn freaky laugh. At the end of the block, Dennis fell, landing hard. Greg just left his friend and continued running toward his house, never looking back. I shut off the chainsaw and walked over to Dennis. He'd wet his pants too, and his arm was bent at a funny angle. Oops, I had a feeling this was going to create some problems in my life. That is the excerpt from Blister. I love that. I do. And 
you know, hearing you read it and, and the, the, oh, my gosh, I, I love that book. It was so funny. And I'm hoping that anybody who I have told in the past day and a half um, about how awesome this book is, I hope that they, they you know, get how funny. I, that's what just got me was the humor. Oh, my goodness. I loved it. I did. And, um, you know, I, I think one of the first parts that I, I laughed out loud was when, you know, he was like, you know, he's going to go get this chainsaw, you know, but he didn't really want it to, you know, cut up these kids. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right. my gosh, that's funny. I loved it. I did. Um, and I, I loved Blister. You know, I don't want to do any spoilers or anything. I don't. So I, I don't want to say too much. But I, I absolutely loved it. And um, that made in. A lot of times, you know, I read a book and I put it down and I go on to the next, but I, I had such a book hangover, and I was like, well, I'm going to find it. And, so I, and I asked Becky because, you know, she steered me in such a great direction the, the first time, so I asked her what I should read next, and she was the one who, you know, recommended Cyclops Road, so that's where I'm at now. And I, I can't wait. This is funny, and I, I never say this, but at the end of the show, I can't wait to the end of the show tonight because I'm going to read tonight. So. <laughs> We can and just I, stop the show early. We'll just have awkward silence and let the <laughs> audience get their own copy of Cyclops Road, and we'll just all read along. Yes, we'll have like a buddy read. That sounds amazing, all except for the, the awkward silence thing, because, you know, our show is now over a year old, and I will tell you in the beginning, we, we did have a couple of awkward silences, and they are huh? no fun at all. So that's why I find myself babbling sometimes, you know, um, to fill it any any way that we can <laughs> and i i do apologize james is gone he had some kind of mishap where he just uh got booted out of the studio and this has happened before to other shows never to ours um and so i i'm a i'm lost without james sometimes but uh, and i know that india um india did our embarrassing story but i had you all prepared to do a, a, a you know an embarrassing story so uh, we and usually we have a, a cute little you know jingle for the embarrassing story, but I'm not going to do it because I tried singing a couple weeks ago and uh, it did not work well. So, <laughs> do you have an embarrassing story for us, Jeff? I came. Up, I was trying to think of one that was just truly mortifying and humiliating, and I couldn't actually come up with anything. So, uh, I've got a mildly embarrassing story, well, which do. is I was at. I was at the World Horror Convention, and sometimes they have what are called coffee clutches, where an author goes into a room, and people who have signed up basically get you know, half an hour of your undivided attention. You basically go in, do a Q&A, do a reading, whatever you want. It's like you know, half an hour with Jeff Strand. And mm-hmm. you know, there's lots of other stuff going on, so I didn't expect a huge crowd. But I went into the room, and there was a huge crowd. It was like, wow, the entire room is filled. This is amazing. So I went in like, hey, everyone, thanks for coming to the Clutch. Wow, I didn't expect as many people. This is great. And talked for about five minutes with everyone kind of just politely looking at me. And then Mike Mignola came in. Sorry, I'm late, everyone. <laughs> I realized that I was in the wrong room, and it, they were actually there for the creator of Hellboy. And <laughs> so I went into my own Hot Clutch, which had a respectable crowd, but not a Mike Mignola <laughs> crowd. And I That's got through it. Really I wasn't. Story. It wasn't yeah. too humiliating, but it was a little embarrassing. So. No, that it's is perfect my for a show too. It, it, yeah. It's perfect because normally, uh, when we first uh, introduced our embarrassing story, James, you know, told uh, it was about poo, and so far, every every week since then, I think we've had a mention of poo, and here I am mentioning poo. So this, it's my fault this time. Maybe I have a poo fetish. <gasps> no, I don't think it's I do. Possible. That's really gross. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any good poo stories, unfortunately. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad because um, we don't need those. Um, I, I learned a little bit too much uh, about my co-host with his poo stories. <laughs> so what are you working on now? Right now I'm working on a novel called Sick House, which is sort of the one-sentence premise is a home invasion with ghosts. So it's, um, it's more straightforward horror than something like Blister, which is kind of a quirky, dark romantic comedy. Sick House is horror, but there's also a lot of dark humor in it. So. Awesome. Do you do you find, um, because the humor just came, it seems to come so easily, um, do you always incorporate uh, the, the comedy into it, into your stories? 
Yeah, pretty much always. I have a couple books that are known as my serious books. Those are Pressure and Dweller, but even both of those have lots of humor in them. So uh, I actually yeah. wanted to be a humor writer before I got into writing horror. So. I was wondering, with uh, Blister, and, and he was a, a, a cartoonist, uh, and is that something that you have been interested in? Do you, I mean, you seem to... As a kid, I desperately wanted to be a cartoonist, and if you said what career path would you, what would be your ultimate career path to be a comic strip creator? The problem is that I can't draw. Oh. <laughs> so that's problematic. <laughs> That's that's pretty funny. I I always wanted to be you know an actor or you know actress or singer or something, but I, I can't sing at all. I cannot carry a tune. Um, as a matter of fact, a couple of shows ago, me and Becky decided we were going to sing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" for James, and uh, oh my gosh, it was horrible. Um, I definitely wasn't drinking enough because it was really that bad. Um, and as far as being an actress or something, um, I, my, my voice doesn't carry at all. So I, I would be lousy at, at both of those things. But, you know, it doesn't stop me from, you know, dreaming, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I kind of work through my desire to be a cartoonist through Blister. Yeah, writing about it. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, yeah, and, and that's another thing is that, um, well, we were talking about this too. It's you know the the question: Where did you get your ideas from, or you know the inspiration behind that story, or something? But um, and oh my goodness, especially with like a uh, Cyclops Road, um, how did you you know think of you know where did that come from? The idea behind that. There's usually not a good story behind where the ideas came from because it's like I think about them for a long time before I write them. <clears throat> By the time I actually get to writing something, I can't quite remember where the germ of an idea came from. Cyclops yeah. Road was just kind of based on the idea of you know, what would happen if you met a woman on the side of the road who said she was off to kill some sort of mythical creature. And, you know, she's obviously deranged, or maybe she's not. It depends on whether or not the book goes into a fantasy direction, which is something I have tried to hide. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I always wonder how, how much I should say because I don't want to do any spoilers. But And I'm, I think I'm only around maybe 25% into it, some, somewhere like that. But um, we've gotten to where um, they've, they've met up with the, the second, um, what is he called? Um, I can't remember the second per the second person that's uh, supposed to go with them on this journey. Or, the or second something. hero. Yes, yes, and and he he knows about it. Like he's he's crying because this is something. So I'm mm-hmm. like now I'm confused. I'm like, is there really a cyclops? <laughs> because the when answer I read... there will be a definitive answer to that before the book is over. So. <laughs> yes. So, um, and again, with the humor, I just freaking, and I, I do, I just love it. And it, this is definitely going to be a book that I will I will order in paperback to have on my shelf because they're just so, so good. And, you know, and I have to okay. say this, too, which is um, I, I, I proofread as well. And, you know, when I read the indie authors, there's so often I find mistakes in you know, in books, I do this all the time. It, it it takes me out of the story. It really does. And it just ruins the whole flow. And, and I can see the stupidest little things sometimes. And I have to say, um, I didn't find anything. No mistakes at all, which is, you know, awesome. That's great for you. But, uh, you know, I've even found mistakes in, you know, you know traditionally published books. So, um, but And I'm always looking. And I don't mean to because it, I, sometimes it really – bothers me, you know, to find a mistake, and I'm like, oh, man, it just messes up stuff, so, um, but I had to say that was awesome that I, I didn't find not even one mistake in, 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 in Blister, so I'm still working on right. Cyclops, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, be sure to send me a detailed accounting of any right. type of Right, I will. <laughs> so, oh, I was, you know, because I think you're so cool and so funny, I was wondering, do you want to do 11 questions with me? Let's do 11 questions. Yay! Okay. Um, number one, what's your guilty pleasure? 
probably the show Master Chef. Really? Yep. I'm a I, I'm a lousy cook, so that would um yeah. Well, so am I. It's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a weirdly compelling show. It's like will the steak they cut open be the perfect medium rare or are they going to have overdone and you just oh, what will it be what will it be what will it be? There's no reason I should care at all, but I'm fully invested in it. <laughs> that's awesome. And though. I feel guilty about it. So. Do you feel you know that's I'm always confused about, you know, a guilty pleasure because I, I'm not really sure what I would consider a guilty pleasure. I, I don't know. So, okay, anyway, baked beans, ranch style or pork and beans? Um, neither. They're both horrible. I'll <laughs> I'll go with pork and beans if I have to give an answer, but they're both vile. So. Do you even know what ranch style beans are? Because I'm not sure. Yeah, it's just a brand. Okay, okay. Because I didn't even, I didn't even believe they existed for a long time. But James sent me a picture, so they do, you know, in fact exist. But I've never had them. Yeah, so, no. <laughs> okay. Um, Not a fan of baked beans here. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I can't say that I am either. Um, puppies or kittens? I'm gonna go with kittens, even though I know it's the wrong answer. <laughs> I love them both, but. Having yeah. to choose, i got to say kittens. Kittens are cuter. I, I will give you that. But they have claws. You know, they will claw you, and they don't even think anything about it. Uh, you know, and then they grow into cats, and, you know, cats are just jerks. They they really kind of are. I, not that I'm, you know, just like cats or anything, but they kind of are jerks. So, <clears throat> And they there's are. actually no right or wrong answer here, but, uh, you know, when we first started doing this segment here, uh, James was the first one who who asked the questions, and the, I answered them, and the next week he wanted me to do them, and it's because I, he say, he says I judge people, and, and I don't, and he's not here right now, so he cannot, you know, he can't uh, yell at me or mute me or anything right now, but uh, I, I don't judge. Oh, okay, maybe I do just a tiny little bit, but um, it, it's, you know, okay, anyway... <laughs> What's your favorite lunch meat? Uh, olive loaf. What? And what? judge me for it. Go ahead. That's gross. Okay, no, I did not judge. There was no judgment there. Did you say olive loaf? Olive loaf, Is, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. It's a you real know, thing. It's like a bologna but with pieces of olive in it kind of a... Yeah, like I can picture it. Yeah. I've never had it, so I can't judge you too harshly, but um, it... It sounds kind of gross, so I won't say. Well, it's not as gross as baked beans. So. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So, um, you know, I would not want a meal of baked beans and olive loaf, though. No, nope, you probably wouldn't. Yeah. Okay, what was your first car? A very, very used Plymouth Caracol. Hmm. You know, I am. I don't know too much about cars, so most of the time when people answer this question, I just, like, go, hmm, because I have no, you know, I, I'm just excited when um, somebody remembers. It took me, I don't even know how many weeks before I could remember what kind of car I had. Um, I know that it was it was red and it was a convertible, and for the longest time that's all I can remember. And, um, yeah, no, it, it escapes me now what it was anyway, so I guess it wasn't too important. It was a good car, though. Let's see. Uh, what I do don't you know anything most? about cars unless I owned it. So I can tell yeah, you the well, yeah. cars I have owned, but I couldn't tell you any other car. Right, right. Um, what do you fear most, snakes or spiders? I think I'm going to go with snakes. Spiders are scarier looking, and uh-huh. spiders probably haunt your dreams more. But if there was a snake in the house, I would be more concerned than if there was a spider on the wall. So snakes. Oh, uh, I have, you know, I have scary stories for both snakes and spiders, but for me, I'm terrified of spiders. Like, they actually, I can't move when, you know, there's, of course, little ones are little ones, but a big spider, oh, my gosh, I'm just terrified and I'm paralyzed. Um, not quite so much of snakes. I actually had uh, a couple snakes when I was younger, but, I, I mean, I guess it is different, you know, a wild one's definitely different, but... Uh, yeah, the correct answer is spiders there, by the way. <laughs> All right. All right, yeah. Okay, uh, Freddy, Jason, or Pinhead? Uh, Freddy, by far. Yeah, e- either Freddy or Jason. I don't know anything about Pinhead, and James threatens to not talk to me uh, until I've seen Hellraiser. 
But um, well, he's right I've to never... do it. I actually like all three of them, but definitely Freddie's the yeah, favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first draft, handwritten or word processor? Uh, word processor. I don't yeah, write totally. anything by hand anymore. No, no, I can barely sign my name anymore. It's it's gotten really bad. Um, favorite alcoholic drink? Uh, p- probably Angry Orchard hard cider. Ah, oh, really? That's my one of my favorite drinks. Do you like the um? Do you like the uh, green apple or or? Yep, the, green apple. Yes, that's food. the best. Right. Now I've had um, what is the other kind? Of reds. Reds is okay, but it's you know not nearly as good as the Angry Orchard. It's like my favorite. And um, number eleven, not to be confused with number ten because there is none. Um, one interesting non-writing related fact about you. Um, I can't snap my fingers. Really? Yep. Nope. I've never been able to. That's I can get through that life was, fine yeah. without that skill, but it's a weird skill to not have. <laughs> I, it doesn't work. Well, I can't, I can't whistle. Can you whistle? I can whistle. Yeah, but you can't. But, so you whistle and I'll snap and we can, you know. It's, <laughs> that'll be the band. Yes. Okay, and our bonus question, baseball or stamp collection? Uh, baseball. Thank you. Do you do you actually like baseball, or do you just not like stamp collections? I like going to baseball games where mm-hmm. you get, like, baseball stadium hot dogs and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So I like the environment of a baseball game. I don't uh-huh. follow the sport at all, so I never watch them on TV, and I couldn't name any players or anything, but I do uh, like going to a baseball game. I'm a huge baseball nut, and James never lets me talk about it, and he's not going to let me now either because it looks like we're out of time for this segment. And um, Can you tell us where we can find you online? www.jeffstrand.com Awesome. And you have other links too, and they are posted on our Facebook yep. page because I stalk really, really well. So I, I know his links better than he knows them, so if anybody wants to stalk Jeff, they can do it there. And I thank you very much for coming on the show. And do you promise to come back and see us? Absolutely. Great. You see, I say it that way just so that, you know, you have no choice and you can't back out that way because we have it on, on, uh, yeah, we have on recorded. the permanent record. So. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> I thank you very much for coming on the show. And this is the time of night where James would tell me to say goodnight, Xtina. So goodnight, Xtina. All right. Good night. <laughs> good night, Jeff. Thank you. The shark bait has such teeth, dear, and it shows them pearly white. Just a jackknife has old Maggie Heath, babe, and it keeps it uh, out of sight. You know when that shark bite with its teeth, babe. Scarlet billows start to spread Fancy glows though where's old Maggie Heath be So there's never, never a trace of red Now on the sidewalk, uh-huh, uh-huh, ooh, sunny morning, uh-huh Lies a body just oozing life and someone sneaking round a corner Could that someone be Mac the Knife? There's a tugboat down by the river, don't you know? Where a cement bag just drooping on down Oh, that cement is just, it's there for the way to dare I will get you ten old Mackies back in town. Not to hear about Louis Miller. He disappeared, babe. After drawing out all his hard earned cash. And now Maggie, he's been just like a shell. Could it be our boy's done? 
Jenny Diver, whoa, Suki Tawdry, look out to Miss Lottie Lynn, yes, and old Lucy Brown, yes, that line falls on the right face, not that Maggie, back in You've reached the High Fashion Hotline. Hi, Labor Day's the end of summer, but I'm not ready for my summer style to end. It doesn't have to. At Old Navy, you can still get amazing dresses and tees. Old Navy? Yep, summer's ending, but saving on Old Navy style is just beginning at our pre-Labor Day sale. Right now, get 30% off all jeans, 40% off all dresses, and 50% off all tees for the whole family. All jeans, dresses, and tees on sale? Yep, at 30, 40, or 50% off at Old Navy. I'm ready for that. High Fashion, Old Navy. Valid 824, 830 in stores only. Excludes active license, men's package, and clearance. Whoa! Oh, wow. This is amazing. Seasons may change, but the reaction to the incredible Great Smoky Mountain views from Pigeon Forge have stayed the same. Whether experiencing new attractions for the first time, like Dollywood's new Dropline ride, or finding new favorites like the Titanic Museum, dozens of shows, the Big Wheel, and more, you'll make memories and see scenic mountain beauty that you'll cherish for years to come. Visit MyPigeonForge.com now to plan your trip.